Okay, so the last part of the advanced Java Computable Future features lessons we're going to cover will be how to handle runtime exceptions. And as you can see, there's, it's just a little sliver in the overall pie of things, but these are important methods to understand. Now, keep in mind the context here is handling exceptions that arise in completion stages, not in general. I, I assume you know how to handle Java exceptions in normal synchronous programming. This is how to handle runtime exceptions in completion stage methods that are running asynchronously. As you can see, there's a, a several different variants. There's when complete and handle async, which have both um, an async variant that will run things in another thread in the background in the worker pool, and then the non-async version, which will typically run in the same thread that just finished the previous stage. And then there's also another method called exceptionally. And as you can see, they take different parameters, they return different results, and they have different behaviors, which we'll talk about here. So um, this example we're going to look at is going to show three different ways to handle exceptions with completable futures. And the scenario here is we're going to create a big fraction with a numerator of 100 and a denominator that's a variable. And that that variable is non-zero, we're fine. If that variable is zero, then an exception is going to be thrown. Because obviously, we're going to be creating a big fraction whose denominator is zero. So that would end up being a divide by zero exception. And I, I suspect you know by now that if you have an exception that's raised or thrown in a Java program and nobody handles it, then that will end up terminating the program. And that's a bad thing. We don't want exceptions to terminate our programs. So we have to figure out some way of being able to handle exceptions that arise in these completion stages. So let's take a look at a couple different approaches. One approach is to use the, the handle method. And handle is a, an exception handling me mechanism that will handle the outcome of the previous stage. And it's, it's always called, regardless of whether an exception is thrown or not. So if an exception is thrown, handle will be called. If an exception is not thrown, handle will be called. Well, how does handle know if an exception was thrown? It takes two parameters, one of which is non-null if things succeed, and the other which is non-null if an exception is thrown. And these are mutually exclusive, so only one of them will be non-null at a time. So if the fraction was null, that meant an exception was thrown, so what we're going to do in that case is we're going to return just zero. Zero will just be, you know, something went wrong, we get a zero back. Um, maybe not the best way to handle the exception, but we're going to do it for the purposes of this example. In contrast, if fraction was non-null, that means that supply async succeeded, and then we go ahead and we multiply the big fraction by some constant. You can see that handle must return a value, and therefore it can change the return value. In this case, it's either 0 or it's the result of multiplying the big fraction by some constant. Here's then except whatever we get back, whether it was 0 or not, we go ahead and we display the results as a mixed fraction, which could just be 0 <laughs> if, it, if an exception was thrown. So that's one way to do things. Here's another way to do things. This uses the exceptionally method instead of using handle. Same basic scenario. We have a denominator that could be 0. If it's non-zero, then apply gets called. And you can see that then apply will go ahead and multiply the fraction. So that's what happens if, if things succeed. If an exception is called, then, then apply is skipped, and we transition to exceptionally. So you can kind of think of exceptionally as akin to the catch clause in a try-catch block except this is for handling asynchronous exceptions as opposed to synchronous ones. So, you know, in a normal try-catch block, if an exception shows up in the try part, control will transition over to the catch clause. It transfers there and skips over the other parts of the try, try block. Similar idea here. If an exception is thrown back up here, then it'll skip over, then apply, and it'll go instead directly to exceptionally. In this particular case, we're just going to return 0. So we're going to convert the exception to a 0 result, and then we print the result out. So that's another way to handle things. A third way of doing things uh, is to use the when complete method. And this, like handle, is called under both normal and exceptional conditions. So it always gets called. 
So it takes in two parameters, which are mutually exclusive, just like it was for handle. If fraction is not null, we print out the normal case. If fraction is null, we print out some exception message that came from getting the message that was in the exception. When complete is always called, but it doesn't have the ability to change the return value. So instead, it has to have a side effect. So you can see in this case, its side effect is to print the results out. Whereas before, we used, in the previous examples, we used then except to print things out. So when complete always gets called, it's kind of like the Java stream peak method, which doesn't change the output, just gives you a chance to do something with a side effect like log the values or, or set a breakpoint or, or something, do something to, to uh, peek at the, the values. When complete is somewhat like that. Okay, so that was the overview of runtime exceptions. Hopefully that helps you understand how things work in, a, in an asynchronous model.